Yes, I am. I'm ready, ready to, to serve for the next 30 minutes, and then I'll go golf. <laughs> <laughs> can't, can't stay away from it. Yeah. <laughs> Repatriating U.S. burn from China to the U.S. homeland is your latest. And uh, you say the coronavirus pandemic has revealed a troubling truth. Now, let me ask you, is this that uh, Democratic governors are having more deaths than Republican governors? Or is it something going on in China? Or is it the problem that the United States faces because of this whole pandemic? Opening some eyes, perhaps, huh? Yeah, well, I would actually say it's probably a little bit of each of those things that you just mentioned there. Um, you know, certainly the United States, you know, quietly, obviously this goes back to big pharma, but, you know, quietly started taking the manufacturing of, you know, antibiotics or ibuprofen or, Tylenol, even those kind of simple drugs that that most Americans use on a regular basis. They all shifted their production to China. So we didn't really know about that. So I think that that's the first thing. And then the second thing is that, you know, you've got Big Pharma doing this and they're, you know, they're getting around a law that's actually already in place that states that, you know, these types of national security related items, so like, you know, the military and or big pharma, because, you know, in a pandemic, let's say, you know, we may need to have some uh, of these drugs manufactured in this country. Um, and there's a big loophole where a lot of people were getting around this by actually buying the, the, the products, so let's just say the ingredients that go into big pharma and then, you know, the parts for military and whatnot, buying that in China and they were assembling that and putting in the final touches here in America and they were saying that this was a product that was made in America so there's a loophole there and I'll just tell you this one thing back in the 90s when I was working for a um, action adventure group I, I wrote a story on a couple stories on Harley Davidson and Harley Davidson first tried to uh, patent sound and uh, that failed dramatically. They never got anywhere near that. But they also were buying all the, the parts and manufacturing all the parts in China, shipping them to Mexico. Then they were coming across the border from Mexico. And all of a sudden, Harley Davidson's were made in America. And, and it shined a big bright light on that. And I simply did not, you know, in the research for this story, I didn't realize that, that this also kind of was the case for a lot of um, things that the United States and, and the economy really needs for us to continue moving on, treat our people, help our people, and move forward and bring an end to this pandemic as quickly as possible. Yeah, you know, and I'm telling you, you're pointing out, just can't believe everything you read or hear, I guess. Yeah. And I remember, my goodness, it must have been 20 years ago, I think, or maybe 30. Yeah. Uh, and we were talking about, I think it was the Samoyan Islands, I'm just going to guess, okay? And they made a little community, and they called it USA, USA. And they were making all this stuff, and it said, made in USA. And, you know, I mean, they weren't lying, that's where the name of the town. Yeah. But see... Isn't it amazing how you should have protective things like that? Because yeah. you and I talked, I guess, probably, you know, when this thing first broke out. Yeah. And I was talking about certain pills that, you know, and, and uh, uh, like the vitamin C. Yeah. Maybe you could get it from this company, you know, in Illinois that was making it. But who knows? Yeah. Who knows after what you just said? Yeah. Well, let me see. Unfortunately, this is where it comes to, you know, these large corporations. They're worried more about the, the bottom line. And I think the American people, now that they're most of, 
of, of us are working at home. And so we're actually, you know, looking and doing a lot more reading, even young people. My son is actually doing a lot more research and thinks that, you know, a lot of this COVID stuff is a conspiracy to, uh, you know, keep people indoors and, you know, scare a lot of Americans. And he doesn't really believe in, in uh, the Democrats in California anymore because these people have told them that they'll all die if they go outside. And that's simply not the truth. And, you know, it's amazing how these young people actually found the Internet to learn some news about all this when their, you know, when their time outside was threatened. They actually, that's exactly what they did. And I suspect you'll see this across the, you know, the entire United States here. People are tired. People know that they can go to the grocery store and stand right next to somebody in line. They can sit and, you know, choose protests with these people, but you can't go to work. So there's no logic. And I think for even the less, I will say, or what, what did, what's Rush call them, the, the low information people, they're getting more information during this time and they're looking at what's going on and they're seeing that they have no more money left in the bank account and they must figure out a way to get back to work or feed their kids and that that's something that just simply cannot happen in this country we've let this go i know uh, yeah i know he used to say something about and for those of you in california who graduated from loma linda high school <laughs> let me explain this or something like that but see he's right on and it's just like uh you know alex newman uh, yeah. crimes of the educators how they corrupted the kids and you look on facebook now and it says yeah. you know what the problem is these these sheep out there, the sheep that are following these orders yeah. and letting the First Commandment, uh, first commandment I'm sorry, the First Amendment, yeah. pretty close, uh, going down the tubes. Yeah. And it says, you know what we need to do? We, start, we need to start teaching history again to these kids because yeah. then they would know. Hey, let me ask you something real quick about sure. this. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce it, probably Polo Corporation, yeah. Virginia-based manufacturer. Yeah. Uh, now, this is a direction in the right step, right? Absolutely. So, you know, and this is, I think, what, what a lot of Americans actually voted for Trump for, because he's a good businessman. And I think they thought that he was going to build up the economy, you know, do a lot of infrastructure projects, bring corporate, you know, manufacturing stuff back to America. Well, here goes COVID, and this is what he's done. And under his administration, he awarded a, I just want to make sure I get the dollar. It's 200 and, um, oh, where did I put that? It's a, yeah, 354 million. Yeah, $354 million yeah. contract that they awarded to this com company to start manufacturing um, pharmaceuticals in the state of Virginia. And, you know, and they will be getting some tax breaks and things of that nature. And they will be able to hold this up and say, look, okay, now we need, you know, everybody's manufacturing a leaf or Advil or Tylenol or the hydroxychloroquine or the, you know, the number of drugs that this country uses. The 90% of the drugs that we, I know we harp on this every, every week, it seems, but 90% of the drugs are manufactured in, in China. And now we're getting more threatening news from the Chinese saying that they are going to use this to, re, to, in essence, pull back America's you know, grip and actually force Americans to be more dependent on China. And something that broke this morning, which I think should stun a lot of people, and I'm hoping throughout the day that people actually report on this, but Mike uh, Pompeo, the Secretary of State, has taken Hong Kong off the list and said they are no longer an autonomous state. They are nothing more than a arm of propaganda for the, you know, for China. So today that happened. That's a pretty darn big deal to make. Yeah, because, really. So, I mean, and that's where a lot of this stuff is, you know, done. And, 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 and businessmen can travel there from all over the world. They can travel there and it's a modern city. Well, you know that uh, he can't do that on his own, you know, so you know it had to come somehow from Trump. Yeah. Trump's not in a very good mood, you know, because Twitter is trying now to, you know, <laughs> censor his speech when he starts talking about voter fraud. Yeah. Uh, man, hey, you know, and here's something else. You know, we talk about all the stuff that's made over there. And I think you mentioned this later on in this report, Hyperin. Was it Hyperin? Was that the name of it? Tell the listeners about, you know, we have to be careful from now on, from this day on, taking anything that's coming from China. Because, you know, this could be a uh, uh, vitamin medicine war. <laughs> so, well, wasn't it Hyperin? 
Yeah, well, I think I think this is where I mean, as we you know pull back from China, and Trump has been you know talking about China, we're going to have a trade deal, we're negotiating, and I think that this COVID thing actually just kicked it off, and now he has no you know no other reason to not do this. But the fear with China is we don't necessarily know what they're going to put in these drugs, whether it's a vitamin C or vitamin E tablet, whether it's an antibiotic, whether it's a cancer treatment drug, things of that nature. We don't know. We, we just hope that the, what the ingredients are on the outside of that bottle is exactly what's in there. And, you know, with China, again, trying to like push back and say they're hoarding the PPE equipment for the doctors and nurses and they're, you know, they're holding back and not sending out as many antibiotics and they're actually building a stockpile of this, which the United States should have. We stockpile oil, we stockpile food, we should be stockpiling med medicines, I think we will now under Trump. But this is something that, you know, you could just say you bought it and you went to this, you know, vitamin store and you don't know where they ordered it from, but it was a pretty reputable place. They took your credit card, must be okay, but you just don't know what's actually in that. And it could be in something in there that's harmful. And on this line, let me point out what you stated in your latest report about the three standard antibiotics that are used to treat coronavirus related infections. All these required ingredients, all right, I'm not going to give you the long names, they're all made in China. Yep. And I keep mentioning this hyperin, which was a blood thinner yep. uh, for people that were treating blood clots and stuff like that, came from China, yep. and it killed a heck of a lot of people. Yeah. So this is something that, you know, we have, there's already precedent on this set. So the smart thing moving forward and all this stuff would be to encourage rather strongly um, the pharmaceutical industry in this country to work with the administration. We've got lots of empty manufacturing plants in the Midwest. Let's reopen those plants. Let's retool like we did with Ford to make ventilators more than we needed and we ended up sending over to Europe and, and around the globe. And so we know that it's possible to retool these manufacturing plants. So let's put a priority on that. And you have um, Senator Rubio out of Florida who's putting out some legislation where it's going to close that loop loophole. Um, so, you know, companies like, you know, Big Pharma are not going to be able to come in and say it was made in America when they bought all the products and the ingredients because right now we're not even manufacturing the ingredients we need for this stuff. So there is room for growth. And the one good thing on this, it's very you know, good to point out here on this, is this, if we go down this road, we'll create more than 800,000 new manufacturing jobs and then we'll put, add an additional $200 billion to our GDP yearly if we do this one thing. So, you know, we've spent a lot of money on all of these, you know, trillions of dollars on these programs to keep Americans afloat during this. And now we've got, you know, some actual da data from the bean counters telling us that this is gonna, this could be something extraordinarily helpful and great for the economy of this country. And you know, at the very start of the coronavirus and the fact that all this stuff was, you know, being made in China, yeah. And President Trump said, we're going to cut out any startup cost for any company from China that belongs, you know, formerly American or whatever. Yeah. If they come back, they get all these great tax breaks, no startup cuts, and, you know, you kind of touched on it. Yeah. And, it's, and I'm thinking they're going to stop a whole bunch of red tape. You know, because yeah. normally if you want to get a new prescription out, yeah. and I guess even if it's been established, well, you know, we've used this before, <laughs> well, yeah, but it's, it's made in China, you know. Yeah. I think they're going to cut out a lot of red tape, and, and that's, yeah. that's something, you know, we got to do. Absolutely. Let me ask you yeah. this. You go think ahead. that uh, part of America first, you know, Trump, Yeah, there we go. I was just going to, yeah. Yeah, I think he had this in mind, too, you know. Yeah. America first, forget about depending upon other countries. Right? Yeah, and even they... If they're, even if they're uh, USA territory, yeah, you know, and, like the Somalian Island, Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico exactly. Somebody but, mentioned Puerto Rico. But right now we're also, but, but we also have a Buy American program that is currently being used by Department of Defense 
as well as the Veterans Affairs. And what Rubio and a few other people are trying to put forth is like, you know what, let's, let's you know, cut the red tape, like you said, for some of these com companies. And when it comes to manufacturing things like pharmaceuticals that we need and take on a daily basis at some point during our lives, that we must buy American first. And we must manufacture and we must put all of our efforts into doing that inside this country. We have the resources. We became a net exporter when it came to energy. So there's no reason the United States in the next few years cannot be a net exporter for pharmaceuticals that we can sell to people around the globe. You know, when I was working, and I, and I brought this up before, the, the creator of this show, the one and only George Putnam, all right? Yep used to have a constant guest. He was a Democrat. And the guy has a very nice head sitting on his shoulders. His name is John Guerra Mendy. Yep. Democrat, representative California. And his name pops up in your latest report because yeah. he and a Republican representative yeah. uh, Hartzler, Missouri. Yeah. Uh, this is by American requirements. Uh, we got about a, oh, goodness, we only have about 15 seconds. Then we have to take a break. <laughs> 15, <laughs> that's it? Okay. Um, yeah. No. I'm just getting ready to put the ball into the hole. No okay, let's, what she's thinking about in about let's do minutes. this. Yeah. We'll talk about it when we come back. Let's take a break right now. <laughs> Let me do VRN Chuck Wilder with the one and only Kimberly DeVorak, Senior Foreign Policy Advisor for the Committee for Responsible Foreign Policy. And you know, I was talking about Garamondi and the other people uh, trying to get this uh, legislation by America yeah. and uh, would require the Department of Defense and the Veterans Administration yeah. to make sure, yeah. Uh, very good. Yeah, okay. well, it's it, it's something that, you know, this is, again, this is a national security wake-up call for Americans. I mean, we have them from time to time. And, you know, when you look at the pandemic and if there's a future pandemic, we need to be prepared. So it's really time for America to, you know, kind of set up a new supply chain and actually, you know, have the not only the ingredients and whatnot manufactured in this country, but also have the, the medications available. And, you know, they should be working with CDC on issues like this so they, you know, kind of keep up the call. But there's still a lot of stove piping going on within these um, different um, corporations and government um, departments. You know, they, they don't want to share any information, kind of like what we've seen, you know, after 9-11, they were saying nobody was sharing the information. We're seeing the exact same thing, thing here. So go back and look at some of the 9-11, you know, commissions, you know, the reports as, as to what we needed to do to make this country more safe. And, 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 you know, for lawmakers especially, they ought to go back and read the book. I read the entire book. It was a, a long read, but, you know, it was very important. And maybe lawmakers ought to be you know, kind of at their summer break, maybe they get a report and they've got to bring back and, and write something on it um, after the, you know, summer break, just so we know that they are looking out for America's best interest. Because having jobs in America is in America's best interest. Making, you know, dr drugs in this country, that's in our best interest. You know, and Kimberly, the bad news is the 9-11 Commission and all the recommendations they made it is amazing how so many are being ignored, and especially yeah. when it comes in to letting these visas and these foreign students, you know, yeah. 19 hijackers, I think 11 of them yeah. were here on visas yeah. going to school. Lawfully. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, well, you, know, you know, the southern border is the exact same thing. They come here, they stay here long enough, they borrow a cousin's name, yeah. and, and then now they're that person. Right. They set up a new life here, sadly. But see, the Dems. They've got the word for it. You're racist. If you don't want to let them in, you're a racist. All right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm a racist then. <laughs> I, I am too. I'm, I guess we got to do LOL after him. that so they know that it's a joke. LOL. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I've already been in Facebook jail once this year. So <laughs> don't worry. Can't be. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, and I missed you too. You know, <laughs> can't be a racist, uh, yeah. It's like NASCAR. Yeah, no crowd, but you can still race. Yeah, huh? yeah there that's you go. what we're talking about, children. <laughs> yes, uh, Do not try this a, at home. Kind of, new, <laughs> yeah, kind of on a new day today, and people are saying, I guess Kimberly was too busy playing golf and didn't make her regular Monday appearance. <laughs> no, it was the holiday, and uh, uh, it's, a, it's amazing how so many people just forgot what it was all about, huh? Yeah. But I, I know you're a military lady, so you don't forget things like that no. at all. No. Yeah. So uh, let me tell you, is it still coming up on uh, 
YouTube occasionally. You're still posting these wonderful reports. Yeah, this one is actually, I'm going to turn it around really quickly because I usually, my news weekly newsletter usually goes out on Wednesday mornings, but I held it so I could put this report in it. And if people get the newsletter, I encourage them to go online because I actually add, I always have a comic relief. Uh, uh, you know, a couple of videos in there for everybody to laugh, and the very first one a, is a new Democrat ad where it you know calls you know Republicans racist and for using the terms uh, you know Constitution and oh, and, yeah. th and it is hilarious. It's three minutes and and it's like all the things the Democrats like, and they really poke fun at the Democrats. I encourage everyone to watch all it. Right. <laughs> hey, we'll do it again next week. Give Alrighty. Next O-R-A-K, and it's uh, vkdreport.com.